Unlike the earthquake that has focused international attention on it once again, Haiti's fate as one of the poorest countries in the hemisphere has not been inevitable. Once the richest colony in the Americas, a slave revolt against French rule in 1804 established Haiti as the world's first black republic. But under threat of invasion, the country agreed to compensate France for loss of property, a debt that took 120 years to repay and launched a cycle of debt, dependence and instability. Fast forward almost two centuries. After more than three decades of dictatorship and military rule that plunged the country deeper into international debt, former Catholic priest Jean-Bertrand Aristide was elected president in 1990 on a wave of support from the country's poor majority. Just nine months later, Aristide was ousted in a military coup. Death squads led by Emmanuel Toto Constant, who later claimed to be on the CIA's payroll, rampaged through the country terrorizing Aristide supporters. In 1994, then-President Bill Clinton and a fleet of U.S. Marines backed Aristide's return to power, but not before Aristide agreed to a program of economic adjustment monitored by the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, marked by downsizing, privatization and deregulation. Tariffs on foreign rice, for example, were slashed from 50% to 3% in weeks, and subsidized imports from the United States flooded the country forcing many of Haiti's farmers out of business, off their farms, and into urban slums. Critics of the policy say they helped set the stage for the so-called food riots that swept the country in 2008. Aristide's second term as president was cut short when he was again ousted from power in 2004 by a coalition of business and political elites. Though support for him still runs high in Haiti's poor neighborhoods. The United States sent troops, and the United Nations authorized a peacekeeping mission to pacify the gangs, and some say the Aristide supporters, in the country's slums. But the UN mission has been controversial in Haiti, accused of killing indiscriminately and eliciting outrage and fear from the very people it is supposed to be protecting. Since the election of President René Preval in 2006, the country has continued to struggle for stability. In 2008, four hurricanes killed at least 800 people and caused more than a billion dollars of damage. Only last year did international financial institutions and the United States finally cancel Haiti's $1.2 billion debt. And the UN has appointed Clinton its special envoy for Haiti. But as international aid begins flowing into the country once again in response to this most recent crisis, the question remains. Can a former U.S. president and so much foreign aid really deal with the aftershocks of Haiti's history? Avi Lewis, Al Jazeera.